What up, y'all? Comic Head 84 coming at you with part two of this week's haul, the back issue edition. Rest in peace to Dead Rabbit. We barely got to know you. <laughs> but with that out the way, let's get it popping. These, these are not purchases that I made this week, but I just wanted to get these out the way. The, you know, Marvel vs. DC that I'm sure you guys have seen before, right? But as I was going through my Marvel vs. DC, on my issue number one, when I was scoping it out, I noticed something uh, unique about it that I never had noticed before. And do you spot it when you look at this cover? Yes. Two points for you if you notice the DC Universe tag on this baby. I never noticed that. I, I didn't even think I had any. I remember when they started to make the news rounds, the, you know, people creating notoriety off that DC Universe tag. If you're, if you're watching this video, I assume you are, but quick refresher is that they had these little four pack, five pack issues of comics, or were they 10 packs? I'm not sure, but some pre-bundled amount of comics that DC would put out, and they were all put out with that, that logo, the DC Universe logo, which inherently made these variants, you know, because it's a unique thing about that book. So, I have one, and I guess, in a way, I technically have a Marvel comic with a DC Universe limited tag on it. Is that super rare or what? I don't know. But anyway, I thought that was cool. It doesn't seem to be in too high demand. I seen one dude trying to sell that. He had a 9.8 of that book. He's trying to sell it for like 450 bucks. I don't know about that. Good luck with that. First up, I went to this comic shop that had a, you know, some some back issue bins. It seems like a shop that doesn't get visited very often. So I found some cool some cool back issues in there. Right here we have X-Men number 105. I was pumped to find this book because really on a hunt for X-Men keys. And if you happen to watch my X-Men key comics you should own now video, which I'll put the tag to it here. Basically, what I do is I just summarize all the first appearances of, uh, like, all the secondary X-Men characters that are not your core team that I think you should have in your collection ahead of all this potential X-Men movie shit. This book was uh, a pretty important key, in my opinion, because this is the first appearance of Lalandra from the Shi'ar Empire. Now, this book gets no recognition for being her first appearance, this book is, you know, worth a little bit of money, but whenever you find it on eBay listings or on the stickers on the back of it, like on the back of this book, I rebagged it, but he had a little sticker that said Phoenix, Phoenix issue or Phoenix appearance. And yes, it is, but it's also the first appearance of Lalandra, who, in my opinion, you know, if, if the X-Men go cosmic at all in the movies, uh, which I think they will, because... Uh, Cyclops' father being Corsair, being one of the Star Jammers. I feel like that's an easy intro. Star Jammers meeting the Guardians. Before you know it, the X-Men are in fucking space. And if X-Men go into space, the property to use, no doubt, is the Shi'ar Empire. Um, and Lelandra's a, a pretty cool character. So this is the first appearance of Lelandra, X-Men 105. It's a little beat up. It has like blue paint or something on it, which is a little disappointing. But what are you going to do? Next up, X-Men number 117, first appearance of the Shadow King, who I think currently is appearing on that Legion TV show that I'm yet to watch. From there we have X-Men number 118, which was the first appearance of somebody. Uh, Mariko? Yuriko? Wolverine love, love interest? Something like that. Iconic 
X Men 167. Always loved that cover very much. And lastly, for the X Men uh, section of this haul, 282, First Bishop. I got this baby. Uh, slabbed and graded at a 9.6, but shit, man, I'm never going to pass up this book when I come across it. So I was happy to find that for a couple bucks, two or three bucks. And this thing is minty, man. I don't know if it would get me another 9.6 because there's, there's a little imperfection, a little spine tick there. But it might be a 9.0. I don't know. I don't know shit about grading, so I should be quiet. And now... Silver Age, baby. Your boy got some Silver Age. 1967. Fantastic Four, number 59. Really cool Inhumans Black Bolt cover. I was pumped to find this. Uh, it is in low grade. You know, it's a little beat. Um, I actually had an issue older than this. I found Fantastic Four, number 36. In this haul, first appearance of Medusa in very, very low grade. Uh, that thing was beat to the street, but I, I already sold it. Uh, but that was, it was just a cool issue to find, even though it was in very low grade. It wasn't, this one is actually, this one's fairly beat, but this is in light years better condition than that 36 was. But then we got number 74. Number 74 was still in the Silver Age, baby. Cool Galactus cover, Silver Surfer, my guys. First appearance of uh, the Punisher. Uh, one of Galactus's heralds called the Punisher. I'm not sure if it's this green fella on the cover here, but you know, when I get these older books like this, especially when they're in, you know, lower grade, I really make a point not to open them up and read them. I just want to preserve it and keep it in as good shape as I can. So I'm not sure what's up with the Punisher, Galactus's Herald, but he does first appear in this issue. From there, I get into some Bronze Age Fantastic Four. This is the first appearance of Herbie the Robot. Then we have issue number 142, The Thing swinging a light post at Darkoth, the Death Demon, and it is his first appearance in this issue. From there, we move to Fantastic Four, number 171, first appearance of this golden gorilla, Gore, who makes a cover appearance here. You'll notice a trope from a lot of these Bronze Age covers is dialogue. Dialogue on the cover. You don't see a lot of that. The only time you see it now is when it's like supposed to be snarky or humorous or something like that. But in the Cop Rage, man, it's like earnest dialogue, you know? Uh, if I don't take him out in one punch, Sue's a dead woman. You know, he's all concerned. No snarkiness, no too cool for school. He's just worried about Sue, man. So you don't see that much anymore. And last of the Fantastic Four uh, books that I got, issue number 173. Love this cover. I'm a huge Galactus fan. I have Galactus tattooed on my arm. I don't know if I've mentioned that in a video before, but I got all these issues for like, on the cheap, cheap boy. Uh, oh, there we go. Three bucks. I kept that in the original bag. I paid three bucks for that one, and it's in pretty good shape. So I was happy to snag up these, these Bronze Agers. Five. And I actually really paid less, because when I went to the counter with my big mountain of books, I still, you know, I haggled for a little bit of a discount. Um, so I think it was like 15, 15% lower than what the cover was. Anyway, next up, I was really happy to find this, especially with, you know, us losing our boy Stan Lee, 
recently. I was pretty pumped to find a Stan Lee cover appearance. The no prize book. Number one, it's a one-shot deal. I actually read through this thing because I wasn't totally sure on what the premise of it was, but it's they go through errors that have happened in previous Marvel books. And there's some pretty interesting ones, man. There's uh, in an early appearance of Spider-Man, they call him like Peter Johnson <laughs> instead of, oh, Peter Palmer in the dialogue in the comic. There's another instance where the villain, I think it's Dr. Octopus, calls Spider-Man Superman. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you can't beat me, Superman. Uh, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure those books went out to press. Uh, so that's funny. I'm assuming if you own those issues, uh, that is printed in there. It's Spider-Man being called Superman. And there's a bunch of different, you know, little cases like that. So it was a fun read, man. I'd recommend this. They don't go for much. Uh, online if you're trying to hunt them down so pretty cool so it's the book of about mistakes which is why it's printed upside down you know uh in this little tagline that stan lee is saying is actually one of the errors in the book which is something captain america says to a villain only one of us is going to leave this comic book alive and it won't be me but Cap says, you know, only one of us can leave this battle alive and it won't be me. So he just clowns himself. No prize book, number one. Spidey. Let's get into Spidey. Spidey, number 113. This is the first appearance of Hammerhead, the villain Hammerhead. Which I've always kind of liked Hammerhead. Just a cool street level villain. He He reminds me of like a Dick Tracy type villain, uh, which I've always appreciated about old Hammerhead. So first appearance here, not in great shape. Again, a lot of these Bronze Age uh, and older books that I got from the shop, you know, they weren't the mintiest things in the world. Like this spine is kind of rolled out. I'm not sure if I could repair that because if you look at it, the staples like a half inch in from the end. I'm not sure what the process is. Maybe a pressing will curl that spine back over, but I know I'm not going to mess with it. I'll leave that to a professional if I decide to, you know, spruce this book up with a pressing one day or whatever. But I was happy to grab it. I like the cover very much. Marvel Team Up. Marvel Team Up. Number 55, Spider-Man and Warlock. Marvel Team Up, number 15, Spidey and the Ghost Rider. What an awesome cover. I'm loving that. And this is the first time Spider-Man and the Ghost Rider uh, ever meet in comics, is my understanding. And the Marvel Team Up that I was really pumped to find is Marvel Team Up number two, baby. Spidey and the Human Torch. And I'll tell you, for the age, because this is, you know, an early Bronze Age book, 1972, it's uh, it's in pretty decent shape, man. I mean, staples are in place, there's no tears, there's no rips, you know, I thumped through it a little bit, and, you know, it's held up for being 50 years old. I'd love to see what this thing looks like with a with a clean you know, a press, but also a clean specifically, because I've seen people work magic on some of these white covers uh, with a cleaning job and just really restoring that white, that bright white color. So I might consider that. I might consider getting this clean and pressed. And I don't know, maybe graded. Cool, cool issue. I love that cover. Uh, so I was happy to find that. Is that four bucks, dude? I paid four bucks for that. And like I said, I had, it was probably more like 350 So. I was happy to give that guy 350. Last one I'm going to show you guys today is a series that I've been wanting to pick up for a while now. I'm sure you're all familiar. The Wolverine miniseries 1 through 4 
Frank Miller. Uh, these books, they just make such a great set. Uh, just a really cool four issue set that I was happy to grab. Got them for a pretty decent price and then they're all in pretty good shape except for number one kind of has a little crinkle action going on. I think that's probably a pressable defect that can be repaired so whatever I'll, I'll consider that down the road like i said with since i'm big on x-men keys i pretty much consider this part of that endeavor of securing a lot of the notable x-men books and wolverine's first miniseries is was definitely on my list so happy to grab that at a fair price and that's it guys there's some fun books in there hope you enjoyed it you know, the like, subscribe, all that good stuff, but really comment. Uh, I appreciate a comment a lot more than, than even a like. Uh, I mean, doing both if you're feeling frisky, but I've been really getting a kick out of, you know, some of that interaction uh, and you guys throwing in some, some info or something about these books that I wasn't aware of or, or your experience with these books or your thoughts overall on it. Uh, I've been getting a kick out of that guy, so... Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Throw me some input uh, if you got any. And I'll catch you next time. All right? Peace.